Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Nathan Rodriguez. I'm a volunteer with Rise Up Animation. Um, and Rise Up Animation is an organization that uh, helps to promote and mentor people of color in the animation industry. Um, and right now, my main job is uh, I'm a teacher at St. Ignatius College Prep in Chicago. Um, and my co-moderator is Bobby Pontillas. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Bobby Pontillas. Uh, I am a uh, animation director uh, by day and also co-founder of Rise Up Animation, um, putting together these panels for y'all. It's good to see everybody. Um, and uh, today's panel is on storyboarding for the different mediums, um, specifically like TV, feature and games industries and sort of comparing the contrast and uh, kind of differences and the similarities uh, in their respective mediums. So this is really interesting. It's really cool because I know a lot of up and coming uh, artists looking to break in and students have uh, sort of these kinds of questions, right? And I'm like, giga means like, it, that's a, it's, it's a good thing to talk about and a good thing to uh, kind of like put that out there and just kind of like talk to different uh, story artists in the different like mediums. So thank you. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Jerry, Steph and John. Thank you guys for being here. Of course, yeah. I just, I just want to say, us. if we had a storyboard off between the three of us, I would lose first. <laughs> no way. Wait a minute. Yeah. If there was a storyboard off, you would be first. I would be. I would lose first. Oh, you would lose oh, no first. No way. Yeah. yeah, I would. No uh, way. I'm not worthy of being here. No, I saw the Hamilton workshop, nah. dude. Yeah, nah. but that wasn't me. That was my students. <laughs> yeah, but you taught them well. They had to learn from someone. <laughs> Okay, I will take I will take the credit for all of their hard work. Thank you. <laughs> uh, what would a storyboard off look like? I don't even know what that means. Uh, but I I would love to see it. Uh, yeah, lots of sitting and looking through a window. Right. You know, just who can do that the best? Life choices. Yeah. <laughs> who can, who can we, would, we would all like sit in a circle and like draw until somebody died. Right. You know what? The winner to me is like who can stay off IG the longest. Um, but... Oh, I would lose. I would lose. <laughs> I would lose right away. I can, away. I can, I can stay off my Instagram so long. <laughs> wow. The I'm, I'm on IG right now. I already won. Going on but... Instagram. I'm just like, oh, beautiful drawing. Beautiful drawing. I feel like I got Jerry addicted to IG. I, I feel like that was, uh, I was like a gateway. Yeah. Oh, man. 100%. Oh, man. Uh, it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. That that Instagram is, whoo, it's like the, the gift and the curse. You can get inspired or you can like spiral into like, oh, these 12 year olds could draw so much better yeah. than me. Yeah, <laughs> Next thing true. you know, you're in the shower, like, uh, like fetus yeah. uh, position, just <laughs> crying yeah. with a uh, cookie. Or, right, um, but yeah, go ahead. I, I, uh, we, I can't wait to hear about your experiences and kind of learn from your insights. So I'm really interested in, in, uh, this panel. So let's get it started. Do you guys mind, um, introducing yourselves? We can kind of go around the panel and, um, you, you can popcorn it um to each other the ways that you want sure cool i recommend that jerry starts first all right jerry you're up buddy <laughs> oh well thank you um <laughs> yes i'm, I'm uh, <laughs> a volunteer tribute. um <laughs> yes yeah, so i'm uh, jerry gaylord i um originally from washington dc um maryland pg county and um i came out to la in 2017 um, got my first work on Ultimate Spider-Man. Uh, before that, I was in comics. So I uh, transitioned from comics into storyboards. Then I went to uh, Warner Brothers and worked on um, Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz and uh, Scooby-Doo. From there, I went over to Blizzard, um, made some fun video game stuff with John. It was good times. And then uh, now I'm at Marvel, uh, worked on... Um, uh, X Men '97, and um, still at Marvel doing fun stuff. Dang, that's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Dang. Uh, All right, who's next, Jerry? It's up to you, brother. Oh, um, well, I gotta throw it to John because yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm John Lamb. Um, originally from Toronto. Uh, started off really wanting to get into comics. Um, then got into animation, and then. After my studio went down, I went into comics finally, to some stuff for uh, DC and Dark Horse, and then I went to Vancouver for Titmouse, where I did background layout 
which was like, completely out of left field. And then um, I started working on Invincible as a revisionist. And after that, I just kind of went up in there. So um, currently at Riot, I uh, work in animation as well and you know, met, met Jerry at Blizzard. So it's been an awesome time. Awesome. Very cool. Um, well, so before, uh, well, okay. So I was born in, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, oh, come on, let's hear it. I want to hear the last story. No, I, I hate the yeah. introduction. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, first um, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been working in animation, I think, for nine years. Before that, I worked uh, a few years in in, um, in live action as like a camera operator, and that was really cool. Oh, wow. But that helped oh, to inform, man. you know, a lot of my cinematography, uh, you know, choices and, and, and like preferences and stuff. Um, but I transitioned into animation because like people in animation are just so much more chill and cool and uh, not assholes. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, people in live action are not assholes. Why did I say that? <laughs> They're really cool. Uh, but anyway, so I, I, I've, I've been working in animation for nine years. I started off as a TV storyboard revisionist. Um, and then after a year, uh, became a TV board artist at a different show and then went over to feature after a year. And then after that, went to another feature. And after that, <laughs> after another year of that, went to uh, TV to direct. And then after a year of that, went to Disney feature to be a story artist. Um, that lasted two years. And then after that, I came over to DreamWorks feature animation where I am a co-director now. Um, but I, I meant to, you know, talk about the timeline of like, I, I spent a year here, a year here, a year here, a year here. And for, for like every single job that I had, like so many people in the, in the very beginning were like, why are you jumping after only a year? And this to me is really important. Like I've, I've, uh, I, I could have, like, I could have stayed on. Like I was, I was, oh, I, I, I will brag. I, I was, I was valued on, on like every single show that I was on. Right. But at, at some point I felt like, I've learned all I can from here and I don't want to stagnate. Mm. So I, I I need to move on and, and keep learning and keep growing. Um, and the happy side effect of, of that, of like, you know, learning and growing and meeting new people was every time I jumped, I also got a, like a slightly higher pay raise, right? Which is awesome. Um, and, then, and then networking with a lot of people, getting to know a lot of people, getting a lot of experience, like working in every sort of different studio. Um, I, th I think that's the only reason why I'm I'm at where I'm at right now is because I was willing to take that risk and and jump. Whereas I think in like most other you know careers, you're 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 expected to be loyal to a certain company for like wow, twenty years or something, right? I personally did not live that life. I don't recommend it. I think if you want to learn and grow, you should continue to seek out different opportunities, and and just talk to as many people as possible. You know. Uh, I, I just wanted to jump in with the with the real stuff right there. <laughs> that was that was actually great because like that's actually something I tell a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, like a lot of people who ask me um about how to get in, I'm always like, you know what, jumping around is actually the best way to get a raise because like you could stay at a company for like five years and maybe you'll see a, a 10k raise, or maybe yeah. like a thousand dollar raise every year. Whereas if you jump companies, you might see like a double, a double increase at times. So thousand dollars. Like, Wow, I, I've I've seen people. Um, I, I knew I knew a couple people at Disney Feature who had had been there for like seven, ten years, and they had not um, had like any substantial raise. They they mm. were still in yeah. the like nineteen hundred per week range, oh, wow. which was ridiculous. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, and people, and like yeah, <laughs> people don't <laughs> realize like, that you can um, you can just you can at any time renegotiate like at mm -hmm. any time you you, you can, can say, but you hey, have to bring to the table like hey look I, i've got an offer from a different place and they're offering I mean, that's certainly you at least match mm -hmm. and then and, and then you have to be willing to 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 you know to to like face the consequences you know yeah. if the studio's like go ahead and then you're like okay <laughs> <laughs> so. well so no i mean i've i've i have just asked you know nice. like without without you know someone else competing i mean if you feel like it's time or you know it's been a year or you know whatever just like there's nothing stopping you people just don't so 
Well, maybe that's yeah. because people actually respect you. Because <laughs> when I asked, <laughs> when I asked, um, and I was just like, "Hey, it's been a year. I've, I've I've been on this thing, and I've proven myself multiple times." You know, production would tell me, uh, "But we can't really afford to blah blah." blah. And I was like, "Well, okay, mm. then I'm just gonna go to this other student." Like, "No, no, no, we can give you whatever you want." And I was like, "Not too yeah. late, guys." Like, what? What the hell were you thinking? <laughs> like, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, honestly, like, kudos to you. Like, don't like. I love that you did that. You know what I mean? Like if if you can if you can get a better deal and, and make more money and and be valued more, then you gotta go. Yeah. Absolutely. Completely agree. <laughs> I feel like that's something that needs to be taught more in, in schools in general, is just like, you know, business management and taxes, you know, like all that stuff is super important. And like, you know, learning art is, is great, but it's definitely not like the only thing. No. Not. There, there's a lot more to learn uh, about life in general um yes and life experience can definitely help you in in any art form that you work in um but let's see here uh, so again thank you for jerry stephanie john for all of you guys to to come and participate and be a part of this i really appreciate it um I reached out to, you know, quite a few professionals and you were the ones that said, yes, I want to volunteer, you know, an hour of my life on a weekend <laughs> um, to come and talk to people and, and try to give some of those that are breaking into the industry or even that are uh, have some experience, you know, give them little tidbits uh, of your own life experience. Um, so I guess I'm going to start with something kind of technical first. And then we'll get into the less technical stuff later. So what do you see as being some of the differences in format or um, style between serial um, television feature and video game storyboarding? So like, I mean, something as simple as aspect ratios to like shading and rendering or whatever it is. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, I think. I honestly, for me, I think the biggest difference is uh, time. Like I haven't done any um, feature work, but um, you know, in TV, generally speaking, there's like, you know, there's the shift date and like everyone is racing to hit that. So the schedules are tight, you know, you have X amount of weeks to produce your boards and then you know you turn them in and then you're off to the next script like generally speaking um and then like in video games it's like you know there's budget there's like you know does the game team want to do this or you know like you can just go down this rabbit hole and end up like throwing away like <clears throat> months of work um you know because things just change direction um and I, I i think for me that's like the biggest difference yeah i mean i definitely experienced a lot of what jerry experienced because we were we're at blizzard at the same time but um like animation is is like i've never worked in feature either but i worked in tv and like the pace is pretty crazy you know you get your script you get your kickoff and then you start doing uh thumbnails and you pitch it then you do your rough and you get director notes and then you you clean it up and stuff and um, sometimes you're expected to hit those uh, those revisions and and, uh, and deadlines within a month, you know. And then after that, you're on to the next script, the next script, and you can get pretty burnt out if you don't learn how to pace yourself. And I think that's something I definitely didn't do in the beginning. I was like, because I came from like an illustration background and comics and stuff, so I'm like, oh, every panel is gonna be like amazing, right? And then and then by the time I'm getting to like the the one minute mark, I'm like, I really hate myself, you know. Because <laughs> like, because like, all of a sudden, like every every time a a project starts off, it looks awesome, and then <clears throat> as a project goes on, you know the figures start you know losing some facial features and some fingers and stuff, and you know, and and then you develop your shorthand, which is like, which is also um, something that everyone needs to do too. But I would say like, in gaming, it's it's kind of different because you like most cases like Blizzard or Riot, the client is the company, so you're you're working for mm -hmm. a first party client, and when you're doing that. Um, they can kind of dictate when things need to be pushed or when things need to be like delivered right away. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as, as Jerry knows, there's lots of like changes that happen within the script, you know, characters are dropped off, characters are added in, um, you know, levels are dropped off or whatever. 
And like sometimes you might be working on one sequence that changes multiple times, but you're working on that for like a couple months. And like sometimes you, you might do amazing work, but then it'll just uh, it can get scrapped. So you kind of have to be like ready to to like not be too precious about anything. But um, I'll throw it to Steph because like Steph has future experience, and I'd love to hear. Yeah, yeah sure. Like, I mean, I, I just want to you know, jump on what you just said about like not being precious when it not being precious with any of their you know panels of boards um i think that's that holds true for both tv and feature um i i think that the that the lines uh, between the two especially in animation have actually been blurred in like recent years um it used to be like you know tv definitely had the harder schedule and i, I want to let that sink in because feature is not like that anymore <laughs> You know, feature like we're 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 crunching our schedules now. You know, to the point where um, you get okay. So this this might sound ridiculous to people who who you know work in TV and have to do like like a page a day, right? Um, whereas in feature, you you might have to do like three to eight pages in three weeks. That's that sounds that sounds like oh wow you have a lot of time but here's the thing um, in feature like you're you're working off of the scripts or no scripts where you don't know what the story is you you don't oh, know wow. who the characters are right the, the you know the thing is like we are creating these characters and and their journeys as we go along and so you're you're going off of like a really blank can canvas and most of the time the director is still searching for the answers and so you know when you know, when you launch someone, um, it's, it's not like you're like, this is exactly what the character is thinking and feeling. It's like, it, it's, you know, we, we say so much, like, why don't you try to explore this, right? Mm -hmm. And I hate that word because like, I, I think that the director should always know uh, or, or have at least some, some, some strong preference for like what is happening in this scene. But a lot of times I see directors just tell story artists, just, just please explore and like figure it out for us, solve it for us. You know what kind of like pressure that puts on the story artist who has to turn in like this, this like sequence in three weeks um, and also solve a lot of the puzzles that, that's going on. That's that's a lot of mental pressure for, for saying like, okay, I, I, I was just launched on a Monday. I have to do my first check-in with the head of story by the end of the week, so on Friday, and then do another check-in with the director on, on the following Monday, get notes on that, and then and then like address those notes, check in with the director and head of story again. And then finally, if if it's ready, if it's ready, you can turn it into editorial at the end of the three weeks. So you might actually do the same sequence like four times in those in those three weeks. And and it 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 really like can I curse? <laughs> already have oh, oh i have okay <laughs> that's just who i am so like it, it fucks with your head because you're like what am i doing wrong right um but you know a good a good director or a good head of story will tell you it's not it's not your fault it's because we're still figuring out who these characters are and, and what's going on here um and uh it, and and it sucks because like 10 years ago I, I think I think 10 years ago, like in feature, you, you would be given a sequence, <clears throat> you would have like four to six weeks to work on something. So that meant you had time to actually sit on the pages and really think about like, how do I make this entertaining? How do I fix the problems that's in this script? TV, the script is already bought off, you know, by all the execs. By the time it gets to the board artists, you can't change it. So you just have to board what's written. Um, you, you're you're expected to plus you know certain things like with the acting and stuff. But in feature, you're essentially given something that's broken, and told you have to fix this. And so um, you know, ten years ago, you had you had the time to, to be like, let me think about this, and let me let me ask you know like all my colleagues like, what do you think is going on here? Or you can talk to the you know director, head of story. You had time to do that and just be like, let's brainstorm this shit together, right? And then you had time to just storyboard and like, you know, you could, you could, well, I guess not 10 years ago, but like maybe 15 years ago, you could, you could just like draw a few panels like on paper and then pin them up on the, on the board. You know what I mean? Like really old school style. That sounds nice. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you weren't animating, you were really just figuring out what is the structure of this scene? Is it working? Um, and then you could, you could figure it out like pretty quickly because you weren't spending a lot of time on draftsmanship. You were thinking more about the story, solving the story. Um, but now, now it's like, we, we launch story artists and they don't have time to think about how to fix it. They're just like, we have to start 
boarding right away because we have to check in by the end of this week. And because there's a lot of competition between all the storyboard artists, you know, it, the, the focus has unfortunately shifted from let's fix the story to like, how do I make my boards really beautiful so that the director buys off on it? And that's that's not that's that's more TV style. Not that's not feature. And it's just like that's really unfortunate. I think that's the problem with a lot of features coming out nowadays is that we're not giving you know the story artists enough time to to actually percolate on on like what are the issues here? Who are these characters? And and actually fix it. <laughs> I think that's like a really big deal. I think um you know I've had sort of different experiences. I think like. I've I've experienced it maybe more in games. Like it sounds like games and uh, feature might be really similar because um I like I've had a lot of different ex like experiences on on different IP in games and kind of like depending on what the project is like the scenario could be completely different. Like I've I've had times where I've you know come into a show and it's like we have an idea of what's supposed to happen and like we'll talk to the director and he'll be like you know, kind of like this, run with it, figure it out. And then it gets written after I turn in boards, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Or, you know, like I've seen, um, you know, I've seen a tight script and I've, I've boarded like a tight script or, you know, it, and like, you'll have all this time to kind of sit there and be like, oh, well, you know, this, these are these motivations. And, you know, I, I really want like the camera work to be kind of like this and I want to capture um, these emotions and you know and really like sit with it and then I've had times where they're like yo we need this tomorrow like <laughs> you know hop in get get this done you know so I've, I've seen like all of that stuff and I, I think um, I guess in, in games it kind of runs like that whole gamut and then in TV you know I've, I've, I've experienced um, I say like the toughest the the toughest job that I ever had doing storyboards was like I think we had um we had six about six weeks to do uh roughly 10 pages of script um and I it would be like two weeks for roughs four weeks for cleans um and then like that that two weeks to do the roughs was like really hard like to to like come up with the story and or not come up with the story the strips would be really tight but like to come up with you know like this is the thing you know pitch that and then you get like all these notes but it's like for me I would be like well I, I didn't have like if I had another week to like sit and like think about you know what the story was before I pitched then like some of these things maybe you know the issues that the director and the um producers would have like maybe some of these things wouldn't exist at all you know I would have had time to be like oh you know this is a better solution to that so like I, I've definitely seen it kind of both ways yeah I mean I, I was just gonna say like Steph you're saying how like board artists need more time to just like sit and kind of let the, the the script cook and the characters cook mm -hmm. and like I feel like a lot of us that work in animation or or you know, just art in general, we kind of feel the need that we have to show something, something cool to you know our higher ups, so that they know that we are working. Yeah. And sometimes the best thing you need to do is like not draw anything, and just sit there and really think about you know what's motivating the next scene, like we're, you know what's motivating these characters, what is the story about, you know what is the what is the takeaway lesson from from this scene, right? And sometimes when you are working through that, you're not necessarily drawing anything, you're just thinking and maybe you're even writing, you're writing down notes or you're doing like really crude stick figure drawings on a, on a poster, right? But like, I think we all feel that pressure that we need to show something by a certain date. And sometimes you end up um, sacrificing those times where you should be thinking about something and just drawing something for the sake of drawing something. So um, I don't know, I, I feel like it needs to be talked about more how like, if you have, if you go past a week and you haven't drawn anything that's not, that's not necessarily a bad thing sometimes most of the work gets done when you're taking a walk or you're in the shower and then you come up with something like <laughs> yeah like, I, like for me personally like when i'm sitting in front of the computer and you know the storyboard pro is open and i'm just reading the script i'm like <clears throat> i'm like feeling very intimidated by the by the blank um canvas right and then i'm like oh my god like like sometimes I get caught up in the technical things like oh I want this camera to do this or I want this this to feel like you know Cora or I want this to feel like John Wick or something right and we really yeah. need to yeah. just like just like 
just look at the script, break it down, take notes, underline if you need to, and then step away, you know, like watch a, watch a movie or uh, go to the bathroom, take a walk, take a shower. And like, I find like when you're not actively trying to make that thing happen, that's when things happen organically. Mm. And, I, yeah. I, I that that sounds that sounds really awesome. I, I I like I like your your process very much. Um, with with the you know the movie that I'm directing on, uh, our our story artists don't have time to do that thinking for a week. They they just they they have to show us something, you know, four days later, mm -hmm. um, you know, after after we launch them, and and typically we want to see the entire thing boarded out, right? And then uh. And then, and then we'll say like, oh, we need more AB poses. We need to, I mean, that's like, mm. that's always, that's always a thing, right? But um, that's like a baseline note. But then the, but then what can come up is like, oh, um, I guess we didn't launch you correctly or, or like we didn't think about this in the, in, in the right way. So this approach is actually uh, not, not correct. And it doesn't really matter who that's on. At, at that point, we just have to scramble and be like, this is actually what we think we we, we, we want, right? Like, so thank you for exploring, but you're gonna have to redo it now. And then and then and then you'll have to check in with the director. And hopefully the director says, like, oh it, yeah, this is good. But if they don't, if the director is like, oh no, it's it's still not right, then that storyboard artist will have to redo it again. And then you suddenly are at the end of three weeks and, and it's just like, why haven't you finished the scene yet? We 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 have another sequence to give you. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's a lot. I, 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 I understand that TV is really difficult. Trust me. I, I, I grew up in TV and I, and I, I recommend that everyone work in both TV and feature because I, I really hate that there's like, um, so much misunderstandings between the two or like both sides kind of look at the other and they're like, oh, like they've got it easier, you know, mm. like there, there are feature people who have never worked in TV and they're like, uh, TV people never have to think about story. And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, but there are a lot of TV people who look at feature and they're like, oh, your schedule's so lax. And it's like, you don't, you don't understand like how often people break down crying from the mental pressure of having to right. fix something that, that they can't actually fix by themselves. And so many people are, 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 um, are, are too shy and too scared to to show that they don't understand the story they think they have to understand everything like oh shit i'm here to to problem solve so so isn't it a problem that i'm asking people to help me problem solve um mm. so uh, there's you know there's a lot of things that you you you, you know you sort of just like think like this is how it works and then and then and then you know most people like fuck up their first feature you know storyboard sequence they're, they're just like I, I just completely was done completely wrong um and and what sucks is no one really talks about it but it's so true it, like in features story artists will get like maybe three sequences to prove themselves and the first one will always go wrong so then you only have two more sequences to prove yourself um, because if, if you turn in three sequences that the director is like I can't use this then guess what that person is going to be given smaller and smaller sequences until eventually they're rolled off and then they're going to wonder why they weren't good enough. Hmm. So you have to start off strong. I've seen I've seen many feature people come in and they're like, I made it to feature, peace out. I'm not going to do any hard work. And it's just like, oh, you're not going to last because it's the, it, it, like your, your baseline is, can you board like a TV board artist in that same amount of time? And on top of that, can you problem solve? Can you communicate with the team? Do you understand characters, you know, character arcs and, and story structure? There's there's so much, there's there's more that you have to to uh to to like know and in, in, in order to survive at feature. Um so I I I personally admire people who work in both feature and TV because I I certainly could not handle the you know the schedule at TV nowadays. Like you guys have to edit. <laughs> and like mm -hmm. like animate things out and have perfect layout and everything we don't need perfect layout we don't need to well sometimes we actually do need to animate but i i'm, I'm personally thinking that the lines are are getting more and more blurred between boarding style of tv and feature it's kind of like we all have to be jack of all trades master of all and that is really concerning to me because we're not being paid enough for that too so <laughs> We don't have enough time yeah. for that. I'm just like, oh gosh, like, like jump I, around, so, get paid more. <laughs> no, I was I was actually going to say like I think um like one of one of the things that's really kind of different is that 
um, in, it sounds like in feature, like from what you're saying, Stephanie, um, and in games, like you don't have to animate so much um, on your boards, but in TV, it's like, not only do you have to really, like, I, I think that was one of the things that was really kind of shocking to me is like, I, you know, coming into the industry, I was like, I've seen storyboards, but to actually, you know, have the directors and the producers be like, okay, so, you know, I need more than just an AB. Like, I need you to like animate this run cycle. <laughs> you know, I need to see like all these in-betweens because, you know, we're going to send this to the studio and they're going to like basically trace your drawing. So yep. it's like, you have to do all the, you know, all the in-between drawings. And then you also need to make sure it's on model. <laughs> right uh, so like to me like that's one of the really tough things in tv you know depending on depending on the project particularly if it's like a 2d show that's like more traditionally animated uh, i don't think this is such an issue if it's a cg show um a lot of times they'll still ask you to do you know all the in-between sort of animation stuff but being on model isn't such a big deal um and i remember like my very first work on like ultimate spider-man um when i was actually like watching the episode that i worked on like i could see that these were my storyboards like in the animation i was like these are my storyboards on the screen and i could even see a little bit that my drawings sort of um kind of changed the models that showed up on screen like if if you can kind of think about that so um like that's one of the, the the big things about TV, and that to me, like that place is like all this pressure. You know what I mean? Like it's like you have you know X amount of time to do these boards, but oh, you know, it's like this character and he's fighting this guy, and then but you know these other people are fighting these guys, and then there's all these things going on in the background, and you know for this section I might have like six, seven, eight characters, you know maybe it's like a, a big like war scene and like you know there's all these guys and stuff going on in the background and, and like oh and by the way you have to like animate it so I, I feel like uh in tv like that's really one of the, the big stressors and it causes um you know a situation where you'll end up for me like I would end up taking time in the beginning to do it the way I wanted to do it and then like sort of cramming towards the end of the schedule to try to make sure I got it in. So like where John was saying, you know, you, you have those like really pretty drawings at the beginning and then you get to the end and then like all of a sudden, like everybody's got these like dots for eyes. Yeah. Nobody's got fingers. <laughs> you know. I feel I feel like everyone should just, you know, do a nice drawing in the margins just to get that out of your system and then just get on with the show. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's really just it's really just about staging, blocking and 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 acting. So yeah. But but John's okay. John's lying. His storyboards are beautiful. All the time. <laughs> like he's totally mm -hmm. lying. Like I look, <laughs> I look at his storyboards. I'm like this guy. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, oh, oh my god. The like the 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 few times that I open up Instagram, like I don't know why, but like John's John's posts are always first, and I just look at it and I'm like, I'm closing Instagram now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's it. I'm like, man. Somebody come and take my pins away. I'm done. I'm done. I've, I've done. mastered the algorithm, so I'm spamming everyone. That's that's my secret. <laughs> so I have a question for you guys that's not on my script because I, I just hear that there's a tremendous amount of pressure. So like, how do you deal with that pressure? How do you, um, you know, what do you do to like self-care or how do you how do you manage that? Oh, copious uh, amounts of crying. Uh, not, <laughs> not eating well. <laughs> that's that's no. actually how it was for years but um I'll let yeah. let's talk first <laughs> no I I everything you're saying like sometimes sometimes <laughs> sometimes I deal with the great you know I do what I'm supposed to do like I get out I walk I exercise and I you know do things that aren't work like I'll watch you know watch movies and play video games and do the things that that gets my mind going like I I collect like action figures and stuff so you know sometimes like a little photography or like um, coming up with cool poses and stuff um, helps helps to kind of get the gears going but sometimes like particularly if a, a deadline is crazy like all that goes out the window I'm sitting here and I'm drawing 
you know, you know, like six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It, it, I have, I mean, I know all you guys have too. Um, probably did it this week. Done like you know, twenty four, uh, knocking off 40, 40 hours of work before trying to like hit a deadline. Um, and in those moments, like I don't handle it well. Like it's it's bad, you know. Like I'm eating garbage and you know, ordering all this terrible food and feeling like crap and, you know, burning all my creativity away. So I, I try, I try to stay away from that because that sucks. Like that feels horrible. And um, I, I personally think the best way to handle it is to really try to have like a tight schedule and to say like, at this time, I'm going to stand up, go take this walk or make sure I eat lunch or, you know, something like that. If you can do that, then you'll feel better, like the work looks better. Um, but you know, is that always possible? Well, I think for me, <clears throat> I just kind of realized that uh, most artists are actually their own worst enemies, and like we we beat ourselves up in our heads more than anybody else ever could. And like I think once you kind of um, are self aware of that, you have to realize. Like I, I like I, what I used to do is I used to look at a lot of reference before I started drawing. Like I'd be like, oh, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to solve this problem. So I'd like watch how like everybody else has done it before. And like the problem with like looking at all these artists who are they're greater than yourself, and you end up your mind gets more messed up because you have now now instead of st instead of starting off with a pure idea, you have like eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different artists in your heads uh, in your head, and you're just like um, frozen with indecision, right? You're like, I, this guy solved the problem this way. This guy solved the problem this way. What should I do? Like, should I, is there a way I can combine all of them or do none of them work, right? And I think that's a problem that a lot of young artists have is that they're they're so, um, like they put all their um, confidence kind of in like the artists they see around them or they're looking to others to solve problems instead of realizing, you know, you are in the position you are because you made it there, right? If you are currently a storyboard artist, uh, working in film tv or games you got there for a reason why did you get there right and you have to break down all the things you've done well in the past and try to recapture um that mental place you know, everybody has that moment when you're in the zone where you're not thinking about what other people are doing you know what what your teammates are doing um what your director thinks about you and you're just like feeling the script and you're just kind of like flowing right and that flow comes from like um confidence and also just like stopping to care about certain things right and that's like limiting limiting decisions and i think like if you give give yourself um limits like you know say like i'm i need some inspiration i'm only going to look at two artists max and i'm just going to close my eyes and refer back to my previous film um knowledge staging knowledge and you know cinema, cinematography uh, instincts to solve this problem, right? And realize that that's why you were hired in the first place. You were hired because someone saw that, that, that you had those skills and those skills were based on some instincts that you had. So if you try to recapture that moment and just like, remember, oh yeah, I'm here for a reason. It wasn't, I'm not here because it's a fluke. I'm not here because I, you know, I got lucky or that, you know, I fooled everyone, like, which I think we think a lot of the time. It's like, maybe it's a little bit of those things, but it's also because you got there from, from skill instinct right and if you kind of just remember that that'll carry you through it's totally imposter syndrome right yeah. and like you also have to allow yourself to make mistakes like you might you might do everything that was pure to your yourself and pure to your intentions and if it goes out there and you get notes back that's okay right that's totally okay you're allowed to make mistakes as long as you learn from them and you we'll always get notes by yeah the yeah there's, there's never a session where, like, where everyone's like it's never like that yeah you always yeah. get notes so, yeah. yeah there's there's always notes back right and like i don't know about you guys but every time i send something off i'm like <laughs> i kind of feel anxious i'm like oh god i hope i'm not gonna get like a bunch of red marks right you know and like there's always that like, anxiety and then when it comes back and you get like fewer red marks than before you feel kind of good about it but um like i think as you go on you build more experience and confidence right so it's i think you you'll feel less um inner turmoil the more you do it because you you realize you can just rely on yourself mm. yeah for sure i think like one of the 
<clears throat> one of the important things to remember is that, especially like when you're when you're just getting in and getting going, is that notes don't mean that you didn't do a good job. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's part of the game. It's part of the it's part of creating a story. It's like we're we're working together. Right. And so like a director has an idea of what he wants and then you turn in your boards and, you know, it's it's about like that balance of like, you know, maybe, uh, you know, you presented cool ideas, but maybe like it just doesn't work for, you know, for whatever reason, um, you know, and you get notes and it's like it's it just makes you better. So the more like the more you get those notes, you um, <laughs> the less likely less likely you are to get those same notes again mm -hmm. right? we would hope you know, we like, would hope. <laughs> right yeah yeah you, know, you want to do those same things again yeah i just i just want to build on top of what jerry and john um have, have already said but uh for for you know for me like um to to make sure i'm i'm really taking care of myself and, and stuff uh i i i have to I have to realize very early on, um, do I understand this scene or not? Because if I don't understand the scene, if I don't understand the point of it, if I don't understand whose point of view it is, if I don't understand what the obstacle is, if I don't understand where where all the characters are, if I don't understand like a lot of things, then I'm just going to be stressing out about like, oh my God, I don't have these answers. I can't, I can't picture it in my head. If you can't picture it in your head, how, how are you supposed to board it out? So, like it all these all these like answers become oh, sorry not all these answers but but the shots become clear to you as soon as you know uh, what your character's headspace is in um what obstacles are in their way uh how do you shoot from their point of view as soon as those things lock into your mind you're just like oh i i know how to do this and then you can really quickly just like stop. but first you have to dig for the answers you have to you have to come up with them yourself and then and then share it with the director and just be like what do you think is this right is this is this is this the general direction where you want to go um and then if you know if they buy off on it you're just like okay i got it and it, you know for me i can i can storyboard a sequence like a like a three-page sequence in a day now if I just know the answers but if I don't know what's going on in the scene I will take two weeks and just stress out and be like I cannot see a single goddamn panel in my mind and that really sucks because because I, I'll, I'll ask the directors like what's going on seriously where's the main character is she disappeared you know <laughs> she's not even in the scene whose point of view am I in? like I, I I fall apart because I'm just like I, I don't know. <laughs> right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um but that's that's why it's, I think on, on top of what Jerry and what John was, were, you know was saying for like self-care which is so important you also have to make sure that you you actually understand your scene well, you know once you get to that point you you, you can you can you can see it and then it'll be much easier to just draw it out you won't be fighting your own mind of like oh i don't know if this is right or not yeah so. yeah i have one more question and and then probably i think we'll be close to time for taking questions from um our viewers but um you're talking about how you know you have difficulties is there a person or you know that you go to when you have difficulties that you can rely on to, to help you out like in your in, in your job you know um is that your your lead your your co like who is it that you're you? you're asking so many good questions i, I will i'll let <laughs> i want other people to answer this first <laughs> like uh, i mean i guess yeah it depends on um i guess it depends on the show but generally speaking like your director um you know like a story supervisor like somebody like that um is really the best person to talk to about you know if you're confused about um story or direction or a shot or something like that or um you know even if if, if it's something like you're just kind of stuck for an idea maybe you feel comfortable talking to one of the other board artists um i know like i could talk to john um we jam a lot like, actually um, and, yeah yeah um to to like come up with good ideas because it's it's it can be cool to just bounce stuff back you know back and forth i think that's that's super helpful yeah so yeah. it becomes pretty collaborative then you, you know what i In think the best um, situations 
I think uh, I, I think that's something that a lot of artists also kind of fall into the trap of. Like we, since we're drawing alone, we feel like the the whole job is alone. You know what I mean? And um, like when we and Jerry were at Blizzard, like it was during during the pandemic, obviously when we we're working remote. Um, you know, when we're, when we're doing our own thing, it can get pretty lonely. You know, and I think sometimes that loneliness kind of contributes to like the self, the negative self talk. But whenever mm -hmm. we would like get into these. Um, group chats and we would just share our boards and then have everybody jam together suddenly you felt like you know as corny as it sounds like more everything was possible because other people yeah. are shooting their ideas and you're kind of like you know in your mind you're editing what ideas you want to stick with or plus or whatever mm -hmm. and then it becomes like a team thing right but it, in the end it's still coming through your own lens so it's still yours right but you, i think yeah. people should should stop feeling that they're alone because you know, like you're not there's there's so many people in, on your team that you can talk to yeah usually i mean hopefully hopefully, hopefully you don't work hopefully. with a bunch of jerks yeah which <laughs> probably happens too right so i, I know john uh, was like that jerry's a jerk <laughs> <laughs> I, I i i once again agree with jerry and john i think it's very important that you you know find your tribe you find you find people that you know you can trust um for me that's that's usually like two or three people per production you know, um, but it, it takes time. Like it takes, it takes me like three months to suss out, like, is this person actually trustworthy? Because hmm. I've, I've been burned so many times before where I was like saying something like vulnerable and then all of a sudden everyone knows. And like, I spoke to this person and that was meant to be kept uh, in secret. What the fuck? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, you know, I, I, I have people outside of, you know, the studio that, that I always turn to, like P2 in the chat is, is one of those people that I always, I always go to. I'm like, hey, you know? um, but uh, my, my story is a little bit darker um, in terms of like, because I've been burned so many times, I, I now take the approach that I, I will, I will spend many weeks and even even some months to to really suss out like how did that person react to, to you know to like someone being in trouble mm. did they gang up on that person or did they help them out were they understanding or did they judge because because I'm I'm, I'm I'm not like a good judge of character like right at, at the at the very beginning everyone presents oh, a very good like like oh I'm, I'm I'm of course I care like we we all want to be fair we all want to make sure that you feel comfortable and I'm like that's a lie that's a fucking lie as soon as like shit hits the fan most people here will throw you under the bus and that's why I'm 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 of the opinion that I, I can only take care of myself really I can really only trust myself honestly um and there's I, I'll be lucky if there's two or three people that I can I can talk to you about more of my general problems right but I'm not going to go too deep into it because I I've been burned so many times and it's just like well I, I have this I have this very pessimistic view I think because <laughs> I've burned so many times seriously like people I help out like people I've, I've 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 really like like saved in some ways they'll they'll turn their back on me they'll they'll, they'll backstab me like in like a week later and I'm like what 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 happened? <laughs> so I've 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 gotten to the point where I'm just like I I I need to see how this person reacts to various you know, situations, and then actions speak much louder than words, right? I feel like I can trust that person. That person always has has other people's backs. They're good people. I can talk to them, but in general, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah. see so many things where where people will sit back and not say a thing in the face of injustice or or some shitty thing that someone said and I'm just like wow no one's speaking up that's not an ally sorry but we need more people who who speak up against things that 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 are wrong in the room and and uh I know I I get very passionate about this thing, so thank you for asking about it. Nate. But but yeah, like in terms of trusting people, make sure make sure that that you that 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 this person that you're talking to, you, you would you would trust with your life, <laughs> because otherwise yeah, your no. secrets will be going out to everyone. Well, I keep Seven hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hundred percent. No, I was just going to say I agree with you. Hundred percent. I think that's for me. Like that's something that my dad like always really kind of instilled in me. But um, I, I, I've been fortunate enough to to really um, to make some powerful relationships on 
um, most of the shows that I've been on and and people that I really trust, like John is a he's a really good dude. So even actually, I think we <laughs> we built our relationship before you actually started at Blizzard. Now. That's true. Really That's true. About it. But um, <clears throat> yeah, like there's there are people that like I know you know will be there for me like like way outside of work stuff and so you know like be you know be mindful like know who you're talking to like not everyone is your friend for sure Mm -hmm. but you know find those people that are and on the other end of that try yourself not to be an asshole ever because you never know (laughs) if the person that you're being an asshole to is going to be rising up (laughs) and has a has the opportunity to like squash you so be just be nice to everyone like that's uh, why is it so hard man (laughs) Yeah, trust and be trustworthy. It, I think uh, when people yeah. um, are vulnerable or they're scared, then often they, you know, they do things when maybe they wouldn't normally do. And uh, uh, it, I'm not in your situation, obviously, um, different situations, but um, just realizing that people are uh, fallible and we, we make mistakes and, you know, try to help each other out and get past those mistakes. Um, mm. You are yeah. a good person. I am well, petty as fuck, I, I and I'm to... just like that person wronged me. I'm going to remember that, and I'm going to bring them down later. <laughs> so, um, I know that we are already at one hour, and I really do appreciate your time. Um, we do have some people with questions. Are you Are you all able to to stay for a little bit longer? Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you I so got much. Answers. I got it. answers. So, <laughs> we got all the answers to all the questions. So. <laughs> So first we have, I think, Jess, um, who's, hopefully you're here. I see that you're muted and you had a question um, way back when at the start. Do you wanna ask that? Is Jess able to unmute herself or should I ask the question? Uh, Hey Jess, are you, oh, let me, let me. Hello. Go ahead. Hello. um, I wanted to ask that, because I am the incoming freshman who will be studying animation. When you're applying for jobs and stuff, like it could be interviews or actual jobs towards like end of graduation, what do you think is the best way to start off or the best time, as well as what to include in your portfolio? The best um, shotgun, hit them all. Like whatever the (laughs) jobs are that you want, send your portfolio to those people. Um, You know, be visible online, be visible online. Um, yeah. be nice be a person that people want to work with um in terms of what to put in your portfolio if you want to do storyboards put your hottest stuff in your portfolio i like to to do like to to put like animatics up on my website and then um uh you know just the, the best stuff that represents this, the kind of work that you want to do so if you mm-hmm. want to do action put action boards up if you want to do you know like more like cartoony um like kid stuff put that stuff up if you if you you know you like them both you know have a well-rounded um portfolio of like a little bit of of each like it should just represent you the the number one thing though is don't put anything in your portfolio that you feel like you need to explain right so like if you show me and you're you're going to be like wait so you got to first of all you got to understand that you know, I was having a bad day. And before I started drawing this and I was feeling like this, like nothing <laughs> like that. If you if you feel like you're going to start saying stuff like that about it, it doesn't need to be there. As, as far as anybody knows, everything you draw is as dope as the stuff that you put in your portfolio. Damn, dropping. No out. caveats. <laughs> True. Nothing to add, no further comments. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... <laughs> Uh, I would I would say uh, I, uh, I, I I agree with Jerry. Um, you should you should apply um, as soon as possible. You should you should start that relationship with those relation with with with, with those those recruiters, because it's not like a one and done deal where you're just like you're gonna hit up a recruiter <laughs> once and just be like here's my portfolio and then like disappear. Um, it, you're you're going to find yourself talking to the same recruiters at the same studios over and over and over again. So it's always it's always great to be like, hey, uh, you know, if it's your first time, hi, like I'm blah blah blah. This is my name. Um, I've this is uh this is my experience so far. Um, here's my portfolio. I was wondering if you could take a look at it. If you have any openings that 
um, you know, you, you might uh, consider me for, or if not, if you have any feedback, that'd be great. Always be polite, of course. Um, uh, it, 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 like, lightning might strike and you might get your, your, your job, like, from the very first, you know, email that you send out. Typically, that's not the case, though. Typically, you have to, like, send out a lot of emails um, and, and to the same same recruiters over and over again. So, you know, if you if you reach out every time you have an updated portfolio piece or something, um, that that recruiter will start remembering your name and also clocking. Oh, this person is is continually like fixing and updating their portfolio. That shows that they're that they're working hard, they're passionate, they're dedicated, and they're really polite whenever they reach out to me. Um, uh, just start building those relationships now. It's it's uh, it's never too soon, honestly. Um, and I also agree with, uh, with Jerry about like making sure that your portfolio is cleanly curated for the job that you want. Uh, I I can't stress how many times I've seen portfolio sites for you know storyboard artists have like um, um, layout pieces, background designs, character designs. Uh, I guess character designs are okay, uh, but then you know they'll 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 have so many other things and and I'm just like, I don't know if this person wants to be a storyboard artist or not. And on top of that, if they have like five portfolio, if they have five storyboard portfolio pieces, right? Like each one will be a different uh, like genre tone. Um, you know, one will be about death and it's so dark and it's like really philosophical. And then the other will be like really silly. It's about like, you know, there's a bunch of fart jokes and I'm like, who is this person? I don't know what their vision is. I don't know what they're trying to say, right? So you you have to be very clear about who you are as an artist and what you can bring to the table to this to, to the studio that you want to work at. Um, I just like to add something small mm -hmm. on that. Like, um, I think visibility on social media is extremely important these days, and like something that you know people kind of don't realize is that a lot of these uh, directors and recruiters are on Instagram just enjoying art like everybody else. And like, I would say like 90% of my jobs actually came from Instagram rather than applying online. Like applying online is is like shooting, no, not shooting fish in the It's like casting a tiny net in the ocean, right? Because everyone is sending kind of like this, roughly the same email to recruiters like, hi, my name is so-and-so. I'd love to work in this production. My name is, and then my the por a portfolio link, right? Mm -hmm. And like, you might have the best art out there, but like to these recruiters, they're just seeing the same Thing over and over again that it can be really hard for them to be invested into finding the diamond in the rough right and it's a lot easier if you're just constantly pumping out great content it, it might be tiring at times like you know definitely pace yourself but you want to make sure that you're you're entertaining right and that's that's ultimately what it boils down to right you have to entertain people and get them interested in your work and want to invest in you as like um, a person and a product you know unfortunately but like, if you can, if you can start introducing, like, um, you know, enticing people to start DMing you, that that's when you, you'll go have the easiest time, right? Because people are coming to you rather than you going to them. So there's also power dynamics you have to think about. Um, that's, oh my that's God. I thought you said, I thought you said like you have to entice people to start DMing you, and I was like, <laughs> I'm already there. No, DMing. DMing. You. Okay, DMing. got it. <laughs> I mumble. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm part of it. I couldn't okay. agree more. I also do um, conventions like the big mm. ones for animation would be like mm. San Diego, CTN, Lightbox, um, mm. Lightbox even um, WonderCon because you know, oh, really? directors, recruiters. Oh yeah, like I've the um, when I got my job at Warner Brothers, um, I met the um, the line producer at WonderCon, um, and so you know talking to him, he knew my buddy Brian. And um, so that, like, that's how I ended up moving out to LA. So, you know, uh -huh. being there, showing your work, and like you said, it, it really like, just like online, it changes the power dynamic. It's a very, very different thing. Um, you presenting yourself to someone or someone coming up to you, like they saw your work and now they're yeah. approaching you. Like it's an entirely different ball game. Yeah, thank you. Some really good insights. Thank you so much. Um, We've got Vita. Um, you have a question or had a couple of questions. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. First of all, I would like to say this is incredible. Thank you for taking some time out to help fellow inspiring storyboard artists. Um, yeah, I'm just really grateful. And I hope I'm speaking on behalf of some of the others here. 
Um, so my question was, did you guys have um, like any tips that you used to practice uh, keeping up to speed with the speed that's within the industry for boarding? And um, what, what advice would you give us that have no experience with that? To draw fast? Yes. <laughs> uh, I think, no, go ahead, John. Okay. Um, I think for me, I, I definitely learned on the job, right? And I think like the first mm -hmm. show you work on is is going to be a shit show. Like, like <laughs> just, just prepare to, to be very humbled. <laughs> you know, like you're going to go in there thinking one thing and then you're going to leave the next month being like, ah, uh, yeah, I knew nothing. Uh, now I need to like, figure out how to draw things that like look good, communicate, but also uh, are efficient in a way, you know, um, I don't mm -hmm. know if I'm going off on a tangent here, but like you have to figure out um, like of that level of drawing that you are, that you can live with, right? Not that you think is amazing, but like you can live with and that you can maintain um, for months, right? Um, and if you can mm -hmm. figure that out, then you can, um, then you can like, Sorry, I'm like I'm having a total brain fart. But basically, like you, you just figure out that like medium place of, of your art. I think that'll, that'll carry you through, and you'll figure out on your own um, the level of drawing you need to to meet your deadlines. But it's you, there's definitely going to be an adjustment period and growing pains where you're kind of frustrated, mm -hmm. sad, and a little bit discouraged. But if you just work through that, you're you're going to find your way there. Okay. Yeah. Time, um, you know, practice. Um, is really the thing I think for me like my second like my first work was like freelance and then I came in um, my first my first work at Warner Brothers I was a revisionist so I was able to come in and uh, as a revisionist like the boards are there and you're fixing them fixing that's that's kind of strong you get notes from the director and you know specifically what to change and so you see you know what has already come in was acceptable um and so you have an opportunity to kind of say oh well this is kind of what it should be then when you actually are doing your own boards it's really just a matter of you know just practice and i would say like as as someone who hasn't done it professionally just find a script um see if you can do seven pages of that script in four weeks like just board it out because that's I would say that's that's probably average for TV now. Like four weeks, six weeks is generous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's generous. I cry, cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, 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 I think I think it's absolutely correct that um, you're gonna learn the most once you get your first job. Your your you know your skills are just gonna skyrocket because you you are at that job like um, five five days a week, right? Like eight, eight to fifteen hours. <laughs> <laughs> depending depending um eight eight hours a day right uh, and then and then you're you're going to be given a lot of work um that you have to do you have to meet deadlines and so you don't have time to like second guess yourself you're just doing it you're getting the mileage done but before that before you get your first job i i, I think it's it's really important that you create two to three solid you know storyboard uh, portfolio pieces um and for me I, I I was originally like, oh, I'll just study on my own. I'll, I'll like buy these art books and watch YouTube videos and and I'll I'll, I'll learn that way. And um, I underestimated how lazy I am. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. I feel that to the core. But, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like watching these these videos is uh it's just not fun. Like all these ads are popping up and like I I think I must have um you know ADHD because I was I just get distracted really easily. Um, but but once I started taking classes, you know, storyboarding classes at Concept Design Academy, uh, that's when I was in a focused, you know, group environment with other, you know, students who were just as passionate about like learning, right? And then and then you're learning from you know from teachers who are professionals in the industry. Uh, so so you know, for me, like once I was in that environment, that's when I started to see explosive growth. So I, I would I would say like um, if you're like me and you can't. And you can't like study on your own. Um, 
by the way, if you can study on your own and you don't need classes, you can just rely on YouTube videos and books. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. No, you're awesome. You're a genius. And I, I really envy you. <laughs> but if you are like me um, and you're a total procrastinator, lazy, blah, 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 uh, can't do it on your own, um, I would recommend taking classes. Uh, it, um, you can go to, to you know, there's, there's, there's like so many schools out there right now, right? So um, I would I recommend if you can, you know, because because classes are expensive too. If 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 you have to save up just for one, um, make sure that when you take that one class, you put your all into it, and that you come out with two storyboard portfolio pieces that you can put into your portfolio and be like, "This is what I can do." Um, so that's my advice for students. Yeah, thank you. Um, getting feedback from an instructor, someone in the industry that knows what they're talking about is uh, just so very valuable. Um, so if you can get that, uh, that that's really important. Um, maybe we'll take one more, if that's okay. Um, and I do have a little bit to add to this, but we have a, and I might butcher your name, I'm sorry, Young Cure? Yeah, hello. Hi. Thanks hello. for having me. Um, so I wanted to ask kind of going off of what Stephanie mentioned earlier about kind of the work culture differences with TV and feature and just kind of the pros and cons between both or like how you have to think differently. Um, and I'm wondering, like, because of that difference, like, especially for story artists and feature, they're kind of like writers, they have to know their arcs and they have to pro puzzle problem solve versus TV where there is a script sometimes, sometimes it's a bit more technical for overseas animators. But I'm curious, do you think it's helpful to have like maybe a studio have like TV feature part departments not far, kind of like DreamWorks Animation, they have TV and feature in the same studio. Mm -hmm. uh, does that help with like the cross-cultural differences between both or you think That's having them question. in its own studio would be yeah. better? That's a really good question and in an ideal world yes there would be a lot of intersection of you know between TV and feature on the same campus like you know DreamWorks especially ac actually has both feature and and TV projects at the you know 1000 flower street um that's that's the campus you know like we we sort of like live on the same campus but we never interact and that's so sad to me because uh because you know, i think we could learn a lot from each other but um there's uh, I, I i think certain i think i think certain people in the story department both in feature and tv are are trying to to like find you know times and like meetings to you know to set up to to get people to to like meet each other uh and 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 start getting to know one another um but it's it's not really something that's in the studio's dna to you know to be like we're going to uh encourage <laughs> a lot of interaction between feature and tv people um which i i don't i don't see why not right like um, it's, you know, it certainly doesn't help that we've all been like quarantining for so long and working from home. Um, I think it's, it's, it's only, uh, is this, is this, what month is this? <laughs> I have like no sense August. It's, uh, <laughs> it's December. <laughs> like, was it, was it still <laughs> July? Okay. So like next month in September, you know, DreamWorks plan is to, is to have people start, start coming into work three days a week. Um, so like a hybrid situation where you have to go into the studio like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Monday, Friday is an option. You can either work from home or go to the studio. I think I think uh, it, it'll be really um, uh, fascinating to see if if TV and feature people are are going to mingle a lot. Um, prior to the pandemic, certainly uh, it, it wasn't like that. Um, but I, I would love to see that for sure. Uh, but that is again an ideal world. I haven't seen it happen yet. But who knows? Uh, we we. <laughs> Oh, all of you guys are the future. You guys can make it happen. So please make it happen. <laughs> yeah, thanks. And adding quickly to that, like maybe all of you can interject very quickly, but with story artists, do you feel like they're kind of like writers as well? And then, you know, maybe they should get paid a bit more because it's a lot of problem solving. So thoughts on that where it's like a lot of hats to wear as a story artist in feature? I think um, as a story artist, no matter where you are across the board, you're you're creating stories. So, um, you know, it, it could be as simple as like, you know, if it's like a, a, a comedy, like kid show, you might have to like create a gag that isn't in the script or, you know, maybe um, in an action scene, 
the the right the script will say and they fight or they fight in you know in this location and you just have to figure it out it's got to be like two or a three minute scene um and you have to choreograph it all and and tell some story uh and and create an emotional link in that time um yeah. as far as like getting paid more for it i'm gonna say sure yeah of course i want more money <laughs> yeah pay I me well i that. would love it yeah yeah Seriously, i feel like, like uh yeah. oh, no, go ahead. make it happen on you first. make it happen john please i was gonna say like um like not only should we be paid more as you know writers but i think we also do a lot of other things that we're not supposed to be doing traditionally yeah. like you know we're we're editors um we're kind of like cameramen now because we're, we're using virtual cameras and stuff uh you know writers and to some degree even layout artists because a lot mm -hmm. of us have to build the sets in 3d and blender now like which is what i've started doing just to get a feel of the of the land right and like some of these you know, uh, scenes are so action intensive that you need to know blocking very specifically right and like a lot of these things uh you have to do a lot of these things before you even start drawing to some degree, right? But we're only being paid as board artists. And uh, it's just kind of expected nowadays if you're a board artist that you are bringing a lot of these other skills to the table. Uh, and in some ways, you know, you might be a little bit of a ghost writer in some degrees. So I think we should get compensated for everything, but that's that's sadly not the world we live in at the moment. I know, right? In an ideal world, <laughs> I keep saying that. But um, yeah, I, I completely agree and uh, I don't know exactly like all the reasons why story artists are not paid for, you know, for the, you know, for the writing that they do. Um, but I, I do know that the writers themselves are very protective of, of you know, their script and everything. Um, and, and, and there's a very clear delineation between writers and story artists. And uh, for some reason, studios, uh, won't budge on that. Um, so even if even if the writer, uh, even if, so many times writers turn in a script that's completely broken and they're paid millions, and I'm like, why? <laughs> and then the story artists are the ones who fix it, uh, you know. And we're and we're writing all the new dialogue and like and and like again problem solving a lot of these things and making it work. We're just we're the ones who make it work, right? Um, but uh, that's that's a lot of the invisible work that that studio executives don't see. They don't they don't know that that, that we're fixing things. They think it's or, or the care. Yeah, they, they they think it's all on the writers. Uh, I will not name names, even though I really want to because like, again <laughs> I'm heavy as fuck. Um, but uh, <laughs> but I, I I've I've learned very recently in the in, in the past week or two actually um, that if if you know if you want to see that sweet writer money. Uh, you actually have to write at least one or two scripts yourself and prove you just hand it to people and just be like i know what i'm doing i've written the script before it's solid here you know and only then can you start being like seen as a writer um because because i've 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 written whole outlines myself and i'll just like turn that in and like problem solving things that's not enough you know for c exact so they're like oh well this is not a full script and like really okay so so i'm I'm actually going to spend um you know the next few years like writing out my own entire scripts because uh it, you know the kind of director that i want to be is a writer director because my manager told me that the most powerful kind of director is a writer director and um he is right <laughs> you have more creative control and then also again writers make a lot of money and they actually make a lot more money than directors so <laughs> I, I i want that sweet sweet money but I also want that sweet sweet power um I want that creative you know freedom so I, I want all of it you know I'm going to do like that uh but yeah um it's not really answering your question in that way but I think you, you you have to start like like looking far into the future about like oh if, you know if you want that writing credit you should just lean into that get that writing credit write a script you know yeah I just want to add on that that uh, me and Steph actually talked a little bit about this uh, like a month or two ago, oh, yeah. and uh, and the, the, you totally brought up the the writer director thing, and I got bought. This, I just want to let you know that I bought the stack of books that you recommended. I haven't read them all yet, but you know <laughs> I, I, I bought the stack. So yeah. thank you. Uh, yeah, well, thank thank you to everyone for like, first of all being honest, um, and then being so generous with your time, and just 
coming out and, and sharing, uh, you know, with everybody. We really appreciate it. Um, it gives uh, people that are trying to get into the industry, even people that are in the industry. Uh, I'm sure they it, there's some people in the chat that they learned something here today. Um, feel free to follow all of these uh, folks on Instagram. Um, they also have websites with their awesome work you can check out. Um, what else should I? You know what we should do? We should, okay, so like to get through everyone's questions, we should do like a lightning round bit where like <laughs> read one question, uh, Nathan will alternate and then one person only can add, you can only answer in like in a one sentence bit. I know that's hard for all of us, including myself. What do you guys think? Just to, just to get through everyone's stuff? All right, let's do it. Lightning round, baby! Oh my God. I have way too much energy than anyone uh, gonna ask for because I had to had to bottle it up. So next <laughs> is uh, uh, Fan. Thank you for using your personal name. With demands of problem solving and feature shows, how come the story artists, we already, sorry, we already went through that. <laughs> yeah. Kirby says, since all board artists need to be able to draw on model these days, what really differentiates a revisionist and board artist? Does a revisionist just have less scenes to work on? Steph, I'll go to you and then we'll move on to the next one. Oh my God, I'm sorry. Can you ask that one more time? I thought you were going to pawn someone else. <laughs> not, I'll move on to uh, John. John, we don't have time for that, Steph. I'm sorry. I'm just okay. I'm so just like, I'm not a break. One sentence or, or what? Yep. Yeah, man, one sentence. Uh, okay. Gravity. Um, okay. Basically, as a board artist, you can be a little bit off model and revisionists are the people who come in to clean up and to, you know, uh, address whatever director notes you have. If nice. It's kind of short. Nice. Okay. Answers that for me. Um, so, Jerry, uh, my question for you is, um, uh, as a beginning storyboard artist, do you have any tips on not overdoing the art in your boards and focusing on story? um draw be clear and make sure that you can visually tell the story don't worry about pretty pictures that's a good answer um chloe that's a good answer man i i have that same trouble myself chloe cordero <laughs> asks hello is there a certain program you all use for storyboarding uh, i'm 13 and still and i'm still learning i i mostly use procreate for everything uh, I, I will take this one. Um, 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 I, I mostly use Photoshop because I'm in feature, but Storyboard Pro is uh, slowly taking over feature as well. So in TV, you definitely need to, to, to know Storyboard Pro. In, in feature, it's, it's kind of half and half right now, where it's like you can use Photoshop or you can use Storyboard Pro, but I think Storyboard Pro is going to dominate. I personally, my, my favorite one is actually Procreate. Mm. <laughs> wow. Interesting. Um, also, Procreate, if you can hear this, please make a storyboard app for the iPad. I thought you were going to say, uh, Procreate, please sponsor this. <laughs> yes, please, please sponsor I'd me. I'd be okay with that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, Omotuyi, um asks, um, how, would, how would you advise someone to build confidence posting online? So can you ask that question again? Oh, yeah. Um, so Omotuyi asks, uh, how would you build confidence posting online? Just do it. Yeah. Just do it. Uh, hope for the best. And if you only get three likes, that's three more likes than you had before you <laughs> posted. So just keep going. Oh, I, th I think it also helps if, if, if you don't um, just like post and then and then ghost, you know what I mean? Like it, mm. it, it actually helps if you comment on like on like your 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 inspirations, um, you know, post as well and, and you're just like oh man I really love this because blah 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 right um and, and if you do that consistently that person will start noticing you and then you know maybe they'll start following you back maybe they'll start liking your work and that's that's going to create a positive feedback loop where you're like oh my god this person look watching out for my work I have to keep posting and then and then it'll it'll you know uh not force you but it'll it'll motivate you to you know to keep posting so that's how I tricked John into being my friend. <laughs> you know what? Same here. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I also tricked John into being my friend. That's so cool. I'm sorry, John. <laughs> also a trick, John. Tricking this, is, this whole panel is me tricking John into being my uh, good friend. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Uh, Nathan, do you want to ask the last one? Do you see it down there? And then we can wrap. It's not really a question. Oh, okay. 
Uh, so I'm not sure. It was more of a comment from me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't have any more questions, but I mean, I'm sure I will come up with more later. Um, and if I do, uh, hopefully you're okay with me direct messaging you guys. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to add something quickly about social yeah. media because I'm like the social media guy. Yeah, go um, for it. Um, you know, definitely use relevant hashtags. Hashtags are your best friend. Um, share your posts in your stories because stories get a lot of more viewership than regular posts these days. And get mm -hmm. on TikTok. TikTok is freaking what? huge. Yeah, TikTok for storyboards hey. is amazing. Like I posted a, I posted a couple of storyboards on TikTok and like they got like 160k views. So you have like, to produce a full storyboard and make it move for that ah. i mean just just post whatever boards you posted before on your website or instagram but they go a lot further on on tiktok because people are in are more into videos than static images these days so we can't have to yeah. evolve with the times and if you're a board artist this is the perfect medium for for everyone so all right Jeez. <laughs> get on the tick and get on the talk <laughs> <laughs> Right on. Um, well, thank you guys for being here. And what, what should we do? I was just going to, maybe this might like I go off on like a new tangent, but like, um, you know, like parting words for, you know, anybody uh, that wanted to, you know, break in as a story artist, like if there, I, the way I think of it sometimes is like, if there's something that like someone told me, like a mentor or a teacher, like a one sentence bit that stuck with me, because I think we all have those kind of bits, right? Um, but like something that sticks with you like over the years, um, if you want to impart it to like aspiring storyboard artists. Um, I'll start uh, out with, yeah. go ahead, go ahead, Jerry. Oh, uh, you know, my dad always just said, you can do anything you put your mind to. So, you know, just do it. Like don't be brave, show people your work and believe in yourself. Awesome, Steph. Uh, I've been trying to find the photo that I sent to to, 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 and to John about like uh, which which books um, to. Oh to yeah. Read. So I'm just gonna put that in the chat because uh, I, I can't find the photo, but I have I have the list here. Um, in, in terms, uh, for if, sure. If, yeah, yeah. If we're if we're just asking about advice, um, time yourself. Like actually, actually give yourself like sixty. Sorry, cut off. One to two minutes per panel, and then move on. Okay. All right. Got it. It's good. Yes. Um, mine's kind of a sidestep, but I would say like uh, DVD commentaries are <laughs> are your best friends, and yeah. DVDs, are, DVDs are so cheap today. And I gotta say, uh, that was where I got most of my film knowledge from uh, early on. Like, yeah. you know, like Shawshank Redemption has an amazing yep. um, commentary from Frank Darabont. Um, mm -hmm. Jaws. Um, what else? Um, Incredibles has a great one. Incredibles. Coco has uh, has an amazing one. Yeah, Coco had a great one. Yep. Yeah. Oh my God. Just like you know what? Just go on DVD hunts or Blu-ray hunts for those commentaries, and you're gonna get so much inside baseball knowledge. You, you will. God. It's film school, man. So. That's great, man. Yeah, that's a great. Yeah, that's such a good point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I just put I just put the the books that I recommended into the chat. <laughs> I nice. don't know why I'm talking like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally recommend this. Um. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, of course. I learned a lot. <laughs> All right, Nathan, do you want to wrap it up? Um, yeah. So I, I guess with that, um, just keep on learning, everybody. I know I'm constantly learning every day. Um, and another thank you to all of our panelists and all of our yes. guests and to Bobby for, for putting this on and, you know, uh, it just all came together i'm like super happy thank you so much yeah so much thank fun. you so much for sharing your guys's experiences and insights and all that kind of stuff so wonderful for having us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 you guys are like a wonderful panel and you guys like built off each other we had like 20 questions and then we asked like two of them because we're just let you guys loose and <laughs> and this is kind of like i always say this at the end of every panel and it's just me being pollyanna a little bit i just kind of like you know, like the industry for everyone that's kind of break into the industry, students and that kind of stuff, like um, the industry is filled with uh, people like these people on the panel, Nathan included as well, uh, just that are going to help you on your journey, that are um, willing to kind of share their experiences and share their knowledge and education and everything like that. 
So like regard, I mean, like the industry is not perfect, right? It does good and bad times, but there are good people like this, the people on the, these esteemed veterans on these panels that, you know, I mean, they're doing it out of the um, like kindness of their hearts. No one's getting compensated or anything like that, but they're here. Well, seriously, talk. I thought we we're getting paid. Oh, yeah. sorry. Uh, no, <laughs> it was only you. It was only you, John. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, I was going to pay you in Bitcoin. <laughs> pay you in Bitcoin. All that to say, is, then I'll send you something if you want to give me your address. I'll send you a nice gift. Oh, wow. All that to say, like, you don't have to be afraid to, to kind of like when you come into the industry, is there anyone that's going to get me? We get you, right? Everyone on the panel gets you. We've all been there. We've all kind of experienced the insecurities and that kind of stuff. And reach out to us, you know, when you do get into the industry. And there's a lot of people like these, you know, these uh, veterans on the panel. And we're here to help, man. So, like, I would say remain positive, like breaking into the industry. And there's, you know, that's all I got to say, because, you know, there's a lot of negative stuff kind of going around. But I kind of feel like with these kind of like outreach and that kind of stuff, we're there to help you guys. So keep yeah. in touch. And uh, yeah, make it, your goal, make it your goal to trick John Lamb into being your friend. <laughs> I, guess I'm, I guess I'm very gullible. Yes, that's, that's the key. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then and then ask him to buy you lunch or something too see, see if you can i'll ask that. him to buy you lunch. you're, you're yeah. not even offering to buy him yeah. lunch <laughs> and then ask him and then ask him what the what's up with that clown like bus like on your like a devil on your shoulder <laughs> yes what, it what, is a devil what, on what it. Clown? wait what, what yeah, clown? There, there is no clown oh right yeah. ronald mcdonald yeah. Yeah. Top right top left <laughs> yeah awesome well yeah, John, I am Canadian. Can we be friends? Of course. Tim Hortons, yeah. let's go. This is better. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. All right. Well, you guys, Nathan, you want to close it out? Sorry, I said that like three times. But <laughs> thank you, everybody, for coming. And uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys. All right. Thanks to all, all right. the questions. Weekend, yeah. All right. Thanks for having us. Bye, everyone. Bye. Take care. Bye.